Hey, what's up, YouTube? We are going to go through this notebook here, which I think is pretty cool. So this notebook takes advantage of a model called Google Tapas. Google Tapas. And this is basically a natural language model that's been trained on a lot of tabulature data. And it's really cool. You can ask it questions about information in a table, and it will give you answers. So you can really, really do a lot of, I think, a lot of cool stuff with this. You can talk to large data sets. And to show you how this works, um, I came across this. Um, well, not this exact one. I've modified this notebook, but yeah, so Pinecone is a vector database that you can push your tables to, and then it, the model can then fetch the table, and then you can ask it a query about that table, and it can give you answers. So Pinecone released this tutorial somewhere on this site. And I took it and I made some changes. I watched some YouTube videos of other guys working with it. And I thought I'd go ahead and experiment with it and show you what I came up with. So I've already ran through the code. Like many of these videos, if I were to do it in real time, it would just take too long. So let's get to it. We're going to install pine count, sentence transformers, and torch scatter. It's going to install a bunch of good stuff. We're only going to need pandas and numpy for now, and we're going to build out the tables. This is an extremely verbose way of building out a table, but stick with me here. I will explain. Turn that into a data frame, because right now that's just a dictionary. And you can see we get this table that looks somewhat like this. We have quite a few different um, columns here and quite a few different rows. In fact, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So this is what we're looking at. And you might be wondering, what am I looking at? Well, this is a very, very basic form of a transactions file you might get on a company that's invested in a lot of limited partnership assets. Um, it's a derivative that big companies will invest in um, because they seem to find greater returns. But it's very difficult to account for limited partnerships. So one thing that you can do is either just become an expert in how to account for these kind of derivatives, or what I was thinking is you could train a tabulature model to then be able to ask questions and you're essentially would be asking questions about this transaction file. But transaction files are only part of the story. And only having a question and answer on one table wouldn't be that impressive. So I think the benchmark really needs to be at least two tables. So from a transactions file, we can build out a positions file, which we go ahead and do here. And we're just going to build out the security ID, description, and then we're going to calculate our cash for the positions that we have, what's outstanding, and then we match whether or not we are matching our trading um, accounting file, right? So in this instance, we're not. Um, we are calculating negative 1,000. 11,000 in cash units, and externally, um, our third party providers are saying that we should be negative 16,000 after all the things that we've bought. So, uh, we can see here the difference is 5,000. So, we have an unaccounted for 5,000 from our transaction file up here, which I've already built in, um, as you can see somewhere in here. Uh, which one? Oh, these two unentered. Um, so I've just I've just sent entered in my terms means that this is something that's been matched with our trading provider. Unentered means that it's it's not been matched yet. 
meaning that either we on our side don't account for it or our trading partners don't account for something that we know we've put in a trade for. Okay, cool. So this is where the 5,000 comes from. So the goal would be to then decide if we could create a model where we could ask questions about these two tables and derive some answers for to figure out that it's this 999 LP 999 uh, the cap C and the R cap um, cash entries that are causing that $5,000 cash break. Let's move on to actually loading the model, getting our vector databases ready, and querying up some um, questions that we can ask, see if we could solve this cash break. First thing I need to do is make sh take a look at the data types. We need everything to be strings. And we want to also do that with our positions as well. We need to do that because we need to eventually format our tables, not as data frames, but just a long comma delineated um, basically string or C CSV type. All right, so uh, we're just going to retrieve sentence transformer from this model here. Hugging face is going to do that. This is a function that processes the table. Like I said, we pass through our tables, and it returns this big, long string here of all of our different columns and the values within those columns separated by commas. We're going to then use Py, uh, PyCone. You do need your API key and your environment that you set up with them when you create an account. You're going to connect to your account via the API key. Next, you can name any index that you want. I just called it table QA. And then we're just going to make sure that everything was set up correctly, and in this case, it was. Next comes the actual NLP. So we're going to get the TQDM auto from Hugging Face and create embeddings for that. So once we have that, we're going to check to see if uh, our vector database was actually created. So we're going to create embeddings 64, and then when we call describe the index, we can see here we have the dimension, 768. Vector count is 2, and it's 2 because we have two tables. So now the vector DB is ready to query. And so the query asks, it, what is the amount of the unentered transaction? We use the retriever to grab the correct table. So all we're trying to do here is see if when we ask a query that the retriever will grab the table that is most likely going to answer our question. In this case, it's at a 40% probability score of whether or not it can answer our question. So it's not very confident. And that makes sense. It's not trained on tables like this. But you can see when we call the ID from our tables index, you can see it brings up our positions table. Or excuse me, this is our transactions table. So it does know it's looking for this transaction here in this table because it's seeing the unentered transaction. We have two unentered transactions. So likely when we actually ask the table reader, the same query, it should be able to bring up these two asset IDs. Now, both of the unentered asset IDs are under the same key SIP. So as long as it to give, returns this 999LP999, then it's answered correctly. So we go ahead and we load the Google Topus. Uh, this has been fine-tuned for table question and answering. And we create a pipeline where we pass through our query and we pass through our table ID. And it says the answer is 
20,000, which I believe is correct. This one's 25,000, but if I look at the original table, there's 20,000 there. That's unentered. So it did get one of them right. Um, I guess I shouldn't really expect it to get both of them right. But this is sort of an odd way to query our tables over and over again. So one thing that I saw another YouTuber create was this function where you can query the PyCon, and then you create another function where you pass through the table result from the query PyCon and the query itself, and then you'll get the actual answer that you're looking for. So in this one, I said, what asset has a position difference? And it did return the right table, and it gave us our positions table, which is fine. If you were someone who knew, who wanted a question about your position, you'd want to look at the positions table. Um, and here you can see we pass through, we get the right table. We get the answer. It says CCYUSD, which is our cash position, which is the asset with the position difference. So great. That's actually, I think that's really good. Um, what asset transactions are unentered? Like I said, this is the one that we were looking at before. It says the answer is 999LP999, which is correct. What normalization ID is associated with BlackRock LP? Normalization ID and a transaction file might be the way that custody or trading has aggregated the data itself or, or whatnot. Or maybe these are the conditions that your accounting team has taken for those transaction derivatives. This one, it says it's 5,678.4. Um, I'm not, I don't think that's correct. If we look at our positions table, uh, although it did return this one. So what, what was my question again? For BlackRock, right? BlackRock. So we got to look at our positions table, which is BlackRock LP. So it did return the correct normalization ID in that instance. So that's also really impressive. Actually, in doing this, I thought I got that one wrong. But uh, I'm really glad I'm looking at this a second time because that's actually correct. Nice. So what is that? That's three out of three so far. What currency is 555 LP 555 US dollar? That's correct. What is something for 777 LP 777? And it doesn't seem to know, and I don't blame it for that because I didn't ask it a very good question. So I left the notebook here. Um, I didn't really see much more moving forward or really where else to take this notebook, but you can see that this has a lot of practical use case. And in fact, the reason I made the dummy table up above is because that's a transaction file that I've seen before. Um, and it's really confusing if you're trying to work with transaction files from derivatives because those are very hard to account for. They're all pretty unique and it can be difficult to um, account and reconcile for those things. So I thought building a table to where you could ask questions, you could basically derive a strategy for reconciling the unentered transactions or modeling the derivatives correctly on your debit and credit sheets. But since I am not an institutional investor, this is probably not the most um, practical use case for it. So something I am thinking of using in the future is maybe my own finances where I can pass through my personal finance statements into a vector database and ask questions about my own finance to see if I can get some answers without having to pull everything into a spreadsheet, organize everything, 
et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this. I think this is something that's really useful. In fact, I actually think this could be more practical than a lot of my other videos. So I hope you guys really enjoy it. Um, I'm going to keep playing around with this setup a little bit more, try out different types of tables. You can definitely find other videos that um, the data is on, like sports. And it's, I think, more impressive results than what I've seen here. So be sure, if you're interested, go take a look at some of those other videos being recommended to you as well. Um, thanks, guys. I appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.